Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my video blog series. I am your host, Nick Renard. I am the head of search engine marketing here at Digital Reach Agency and today we are going to be reviewing some campaign settings within Google AdWords that I feel oftentimes get overlooked. Uh, a lot of the times when we get handed campaigns from um, you know, from clients, whether they were passed down from previous agencies that uh, have since uh, not, or they're not working with them anymore, or maybe they tried handling them internally, and we uh, are doing an audit on their uh, account. These are some of the settings that usually they're just left on by default because people never really check them. And so I wanted to create this video for you guys today to be able to be aware of what they are, what they do, and what our recommendations are for um, for adjusting them. So you'll see that I have the AdWords editor up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new campaign here by just hitting this plus campaign button. And we'll click on that new campaign that we just created. And you'll see here uh, the basic settings in this box in the bottom right here. Uh, this is what we're going to be going over. So the first thing I want to review is something called search partners. You can see right here this little drop down box. The default is to set search partners to enabled. Now this is um, a little bit misleading on Google's part. I feel uh, if you set up an AdWords campaign, not, let's say you're you know, a novice to AdWords, you would assume that your ads are only being displayed on Google. That's actually not the case by default. Uh, Google is partnered with what they call search partners. They're partnered with uh, other um, companies uh, like uh, I think Ask Jeeves is one of their partners. Amazon, I believe, is a partner. I'm not sure what the full list, list is. I'm sure if you just look up Google AdWords search partners, the, the list will come up. Um, I've looked at it before, but it's been a long time. Uh, and what that means is that your ads are actually going to show up on more than just Google. It's going to show up on those other uh, search partner networks as well when people are looking up uh, the same keywords that you're trying to target. So by turning this on, you're actually uh, increasing the total amount of impression share that there is to be had out there. Uh, the reason that I feel that this is a little misleading, and I don't know if I would call it shady, uh, but it... it, it um, essentially is just putting your ads in front of more people to try and make Google more money. I don't really like that. I really, I, I would rather that Google by default turns this off. Um, what we recommend is that if you're, if you don't know how your ads perform on the search partner networks, then what you should do is turn it on to begin with and let it run for maybe one, two, three months, depending on how much you're spending, just until you have enough data to look at and make a judgment call on whether or not you want to be running on search partner networks. At that point, what you can do is you can go into AdWords and you can see how your ads perform on the search partner networks. I recommend you just look up a Google support page on how to look that up. It's pretty straightforward. And um, if the performance on the search ne partner networks is good, then go ahead and leave it on. If it's bad, then you'll want to come in here and uh, select this to disabled. Uh, because if it's bad, then you don't want to be spending money on it. Uh, so just be aware of that the default is that this will just be on in any given campaign unless you uh, manually turn it off. All right, the next thing I want to go over here is device bid adjustments. I actually have quite a few blogs, and I know that my, um, my techs that work here with me have some blogs on device bid adjustments as well. You'll just want to keep in mind that your ads can show up on desktop, mobile, and tablet. Uh, we have seen that tablet, in terms of lead generation, uh, is very poor overall. Uh, it is it is another is similar to the search partner network and that we'd recommend that you run it for a little while and analyze your data before making a judgment call. I am always going to say that <laughs> I'm going to let the data do the talking. So you need to gather the data first, analyze it, see how these devices do for you, and then apply bid modifiers appropriately. That being said, a lot of people have websites that uh, maybe they're not fully set up for mobile or other devices or maybe you don't want to be showing up on desktop because you're like trying to get people to I don't know maybe it's a more mobile uh, mobile oriented product or service uh, in that case you would want to like to shut off desktop we would just make this say minus 100% and that'll um, 
that'll apply a negative 100% bid modifier to anyone who's coming from desktop. Same thing for mobile, you can do minus 100. Um, another thing you can do is if you do re review the performance, and let's say you see that like desktop does a lot better than mobile, then you can always come in here and add like a plus 10% modifier to desktop and a minus 10% modifier to mobile, and that'll help you reallocate some of your spend from your underperforming uh, devices to the ones that are doing better. All right, next on the list is Enhanced CPC. I hate this setting. This is my this is a setting that I actually do consider to be very shady by Google. Enhanced CPC, what it is, I first of all, I highly recommend you look this up and educate yourself about this setting. Uh, enhanced CPC in one or two sentences, it allows Google to increase your bids on any given keyword by up to 30% if it's capable of generating a click by increasing it by that much. So that means that if you're bidding a dollar and a dollar isn't going to win the auction, but a dollar and 30 cents will win the auction to get your ad to show, then it's going to bid 30% more in that case in order for your ad to show up in the auction. This is really just a way for Google to inflate your bids by 30%. I know that if a Google rep was on, on the call with me right now that they'd say, no, this is trying to help you and we're just trying to make it so that your ads show more. It's total horseshit. Don't listen to that. Uh, th this setting is absolutely a scam. And if you are managing your bids manually, you should not be using this setting at all. Uh, if, if you are doing week over week reviews and you're doing optimizations in the campaigns, then increasing the bids by 30% or decreasing by 30% or any change like that is something that you should be handling manually based on the performance of your keywords. It is not an auction by auction thing. This setting is really just a way for Google to inflate your bids. I'm not a fan of it. I highly recommend that if you're, if you're, um, if you're doing this, uh, if you're managing your campaigns that you make sure that this is turned off because it's just going to lead to a higher cost per click. All right, uh, next up is frequency capping. That's the one right here. The default here is to have no cap on frequency capping. So what that means is if you have a remarketing campaign, for example, that ad can show to the same person six million times and it'll just keep showing and showing and showing and showing. It, hence, no cap. Uh, what you can do with frequency capping, for example, if you feel that you just keep seeing your ad everywhere and you feel it's kind of annoying, you can click this edit button and you can add a cap. Uh, let's see, this is for display network campaigns here. So you can add a cap of like maybe 10 impressions per day so people can only see that ad as they're browsing around on other, other sites a certain amount. Um, you can even set that cap to weekly or monthly. Um, anyways, this is just a setting. I don't think that it's bad to have no cap on your frequency capping. I think it's fine if something like a remarketing ad is being plastered everywhere. Honestly, using like the remarketing reference, something like that is used for awareness anyways. And um, remarketing campaigns are really good at generating a ton of impressions for very cheap. So I, I, I have a lot of clients who don't they, they want to cap their frequency. I'm not a huge fan of capping frequency. I'd rather th just let the ads show. Uh, but if that's something that you want to do, if you want to kind of limit the amount that people are seeing this so it's not flooding them, I'm also not opposed to the idea. I just think if it were my business, I would just kind of like let it run unless I had a really good reason to, um, to uh, shut that off for, yeah, whatever reason. Anyways, that, that one's up to you. I don't really have any like recommendations or best practices on that one. Um, all right, the next one here, this is going to be the second to last one. Uh, this is ad rotation. Um, ad rotation by default is going to be set to this setting here where it says optimized for clicks. This is a little scammy, but not nearly as much as enhanced CBC. Uh, the reason it's set to optimize for clicks is because Google makes money off of clicks. Imagine that. Uh, so if they are showing the ads that are getting clicked on the most, then Google is making the most money. It is not for you. It is not to try and make you more money. What we would recommend in this situation, we would always recommend that you be running an A-B split test. So have one ad that is showing one line of ad copy and another ad that's showing another line of ad copy. Uh, another example of an A-B split test would be like one ad. <clears throat> Let's say you have two ads, A and B. 
they're both the exact same in terms of how they look on the surface, but one goes to like a white paper download and the other one goes to like a demo request. And then you can analyze the performance of those after a month or two of running it and see which of the assets is um, is convert generating better leads for you. Uh, there's a lot of variations of ad rotations that you can do. I highly recommend you check out our blogs on AV split tests and ad rotations. We have a lot of good resources there. Uh, the default here, again, is to set it to optimize for clicks. I would never use this, and if you are using, um, if you are doing an A-B split test, you'll want to change this to this last setting here called rotate indefinitely. And that means what it's going to do is it's going to split the traffic evenly between your ads. Um, some people have like three or four ads running at, at, at a time, which is fine if you want to do that. Um, but it'll it'll essentially split the traffic between all of those. So that way, at the end of four months, um, the problem with turning it on to optimize for clicks is Google's just going to funnel all of your traffic into one ad that has the higher click-through rate, uh, whereas this one splits the data between all of them, so that way you can um, have statistically significant data on all of your ads to determine which one is the better performer. Uh, overall, if you leave it on optimize for clicks, Google is just going to show the one with the higher click-through rate, which is fine. It's not terrible, but uh, I prefer to uh, analyze uh, our A-B split tests and take into consideration more variables than just clicks. For example, cost per conversion data is something that I would say uh, has a significantly more weight than something just like clicks. Because um, if I told you that ad A generates 100 clicks and ad B generates 90 clicks, um, Google would want you to show for the hundred click ad, but if I were also to, if I were also to say that ad A generated two conversions and ad B generated fifty conversions, all of a sudden that ninety click ad is looking a lot better. So that's why we would we would much value something besides clicks, and we're not a huge fan of that setting. The last one I want to go over here is targeting. Oops, uh, let's go back here. Targeting method. Uh, the default here is uh, to set, it's called people in searching for or viewing pages about my targeted location recommended. This one's fine. The way that this one works is that if you have a campaign that's running, let's say in the United States, let's say you're like advertising for like data analytics software uh, and your ads are running in the United States. If someone in India or China or anywhere outside of the United States goes to Google and they type data analytics software in the United States or USA data analytics software or something that has the, the name of the country that you're advertising in in their search query, then they're going to show your ad even though that user is outside of your geographic targeting. The reason that this isn't so bad is that somebody who's outside of the United States Googling a term with the term United States in it might actually be interested in buying software, you know, in the geographic targeting that you are that you are trying to show for. So it's not terrible, but if you leave this on, then um, your analytics is going to get, uh, I guess, more flooded with data from other countries outside of the ones that you're trying to advertise for. Um, if you're like a local business or something, you definitely want to turn this off. Like if you're trying to get people to come to your store, then this setting is useless because if someone were to type, you know, I don't know, like let's say you're a bike repair shop or something like that and you're only servicing to people that are kind of like within a, you know, several mile radius of the city that you're in, but then someone who's 3,000 miles away types bike repair in your city, um, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to come up with an example off the top of my head. Uh, it's, it's not the worst setting. What we do recommend is uh, setting this to people in my targeted location here, the second one, and that's going to limit it to only show to people that are actually in your geographic location. It will not show to people outside of it, even if they have that in, you know, like in the United States in their, um, in their search term. So it's just a, a cleaner way of managing your geographic settings by changing, adjusting that from the recommended one there. Although if you use the, um, the recommended one on this one, that's, that's also fine. Anyways, these are uh, six of the uh, settings that I wanted to review with you guys today on uh, what Google sets by default and uh, kind of our recommendations on what we, uh, we would do with them. 
Um, I hope this video was helpful, and I will plan on seeing you guys in my next video blog. Thanks for watching.